So our lecture today is meant to help you get some quick advice about how to use Microsoft Excel to make graphs. Excel is a great data analysis and graphing program. Once you've got Excel installed on your computer and you open it, you'll see a bunch of columns that are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, and rows that are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's say you have some data and you want to produce a bar graph. You put the different categories of data in the columns and the data in the rows. So this data is showing how many students in our class are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors, and this is percent of students. So 35% are freshmen, 33% sophomores, and so on. So if I want to make a bar graph out of this, I'll just select the data that I want to graph and go to the Insert tab and find a bar graph that you want to use. So here's our bar, bar graph with vertical columns, and we see it produces a graph. So um, when we have a graph like this, we need to have a title and a label on both the y-axis and the x-axis. So let's add a chart element that is axes titles. Let's put a horizontal title on and a vertical title. The vertical title is percent of students. This title is a distribution of grade level. And then our title is probably not best percent of students. Our title is really best going to be distribution of students in CAM 2045, which is our class. And then you can resize the graph however you want. It comes out looking rectangular. You could make it a square. You could change the font size by going back to the Home tab and increasing the font if you want to. You can change your graph in, in all kinds of ways. You can add or remove um, the, the lines, the grid lines, and that kind of thing. So you can change it. You can also change the color on your graph bars if you want to. You could change the fill. I don't like blue anymore. I think red might be better, so let's use red. There's a lot of options you can do, but the really important thing is that you're displaying your data in a graphical way, really visually. So that's a helpful thing. The next helpful thing is to try to make a linear scatter plot, and you'll do this a lot in the sciences. So this is a really helpful thing to learn. So the scenario that we're looking at is how many semesters will it take for a student to earn 100 credits in course credit? So this student has completed four semesters and here's how many credits he or she completed after each semester. So if we want to know how long it will take to earn 100 credits, it will help if we can make this a scatter plot. So I've got my uh, semester data, the X data here on this column and the Y data in the next column and I want to insert a scatter plot. Now the question arises is should we have discrete points like this or should we connect the points with the line? If you have discrete data and you don't know the points in between along, if you don't know the points in between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2, you should not have a line that connects them. You should just have discrete scatter points like this. Now once again we still need to have axes titles so let's add those chart elements and type those in. Remember the x-axis was semester and the y-axis was course credit. And then we would change our title to something suitable, which is course credits per unit of time. So we've got a nice graph that displays how many credits the student has earned as a function of semester, um, but it doesn't go all the way out to 100 credits. And we need to know, that's our question, how many semesters, which is X, how many semesters is X, will it take to earn 100 credits? So Y would be 100. And the way to do this is to fit this data to a straight line and project it out to 100. So let me tell you how to do this. If you have a PC, you will right click on the, any of the data points and a little table will pop up. If you have a Mac, then you have to control click, control and hold and then click, and then you get a similar menu. And here we would say add trend line. And a little box pops up that says 
what kind of trend line do you want? Since this is linear data, we're obviously gonna select linear. And then if we scroll down, we will say we want to display the equation on the chart. And our a little equation shows up that says y, which is the number of course credits, equals this slope times the semester plus this intercept. So now we can solve this problem. How many semesters will it take to, for the student to earn 100 credits? Well, we're trying to solve for x when we know y. So y is 100 because it's 100 credits. So we would just use Excel to solve this. We'll solve for x. So y equals 100 and we want to know what x is. So here's how we would solve this in Excel. You can solve it with a calculator or a pen or a pencil, um, but in Excel you can also solve it. If you want to do algebra, you'll type an equal sign and then just type in that we want to solve for x. How would we do that? Well, we'll take y, which is 100, and we'll subtract the intercept, which is 0 0.4, and then we'll divide it by the slope, which is 11.4. And it says that we will have to take about eight, between eight and nine semesters if we continue along this trajectory. So this predicts what will happen in the future if you continue along this straight line. And that is an effective way to do this. So this person will have to take probably nine credits in total, or nine semesters to finish up their degree.